In this video we're going to discuss Marfan syndrome which is a pretty uh, commonly tested uh, disorder and uh, basically Marfan syndrome is a genetic it's autosomal uh, uh, dominant disorder and the basic problem is that you have a mutation in a protein known as fibrillin very important to remember and this protein is um, a component of blood vessels and um, uh, also of ligaments and also is in the eye so as a result the complications when you have a mutation in this uh, glycoprotein you have problems in um, the cardiovascular system uh, uh, mainly the heart and the blood vessels you have problems in the musculoskeletal system because the ligaments and of course the uh, ocular uh, because the lens is involved and I'll, I'll discuss what problems occur so let's just get started and we'll what we'll do is we'll break it up into uh, cardiovascular musculoskeletal and ocular and so you don't get confused so there's not too much information bombarding you and the first thing we'll get into is symptoms now the symptoms of Marfan syndrome for the cardiovascular are very classic on uh, on uh, licensing exams. And they're not really, I mean, what I'm describing is more so not necessarily a symptom, but rather a um, an actual occurrence. And mitral valve prolapse is by far uh, one of the most common cardiac conditions that occurs uh, because of that uh, mutation in that glycoprotein fibrillin. The next thing that can ha happen is aortic dissection and um, I have a little picture here of uh, aortic dissection to kind of explain so this uh, is a diagram of a blood vessel and uh, the, this uh, points to the blood flowing and if you notice there's a tear in the inner uh, wall of this blood vessel and as a result that tear eventually leads to this dissection and the blood instead of going down the lumen it can go into that tear so that's that's a nice diagram that illustrates what aortic dissection is all about so those are the two big ones for cardiovascular now when you have a, a mutation in the fibrillin um, um, glycoprotein you also get musculoskeletal abnormalities and those um, most classically are very very long arm span the arms of such individuals are very long and generally speaking they are taller than average people with Marfan syndrome. Ocular, the lens is affected, the lens of the eye and it's affected uh, in, the, in the following way, it's dislocated, dislocated lens and it's given a special name which is often um, on licensing exam is known as ectopia lentis. So those are uh, I guess um, uh, physical exam findings, uh, findings uh, on, um, on on tests, and, um, and more more rather than symptoms. So then, now, how do you diagnose it? Well, Marfan syndrome is diagnosed primarily uh, by clinical criteria. You know, the if a person comes in, they're very tall, and you're able to notice some pretty um, um, classic uh, physical exam abnormalities, um, mitral valve prolapse can even be detected on heart exam with a murmur uh, or even a click. Uh, more commonly, uh, if a person has uh, um, mitral valve prolapse, they will have a systolic click. Um, so some of the physical exam findings. But uh, diagnostic testing can be great uh, in helping uh, diagnose this. So for the cardiovascular system, you do an echocardiogram. And the echocardiogram will show you the mitral valve prolapse. For the musculoskeletal system, you will do x-rays of the skeletal system, the hand, the, the spine, because a lot of these patients can also have scoliosis. And then for the ocular uh, diagnosis, you would do something called a slit lamp exam, which uh, helps you tech, check for lens abnormalities. Okay, so those are the the main players. So the treatment uh, of Marfan syndrome, there's no magic cure. It's really treating the uh, symptomatology or, or treating the um, uh, the actual uh, uh, 
main uh, diagnostic findings, you're focusing on prevention and treatment of complications. So the, the first uh, medications I want to talk about are beta blockers. And beta blockers are known to uh, lower uh, uh, the myocardial contractility and that can reduce the progression of this aortic dissection. Now as you know beta blockers are used commonly for management of blood pressure and they can also help prevent cardiovascular complications in Marfan syndrome. Sometimes if the person uh, is uh, have a serious enough case you can also do uh, um, aortic uh, repair or valve repair to help uh, make sure the, the cardiac complications don't progress. The um, the musculoskeletal abnormalities are really um, helped with bracing and if necessary surgery and the the only other thing I wanted to really mention is uh, because of this mitral valve prolapse you've probably already heard of this is that to prevent or, or uh, to yep yeah, to prevent uh, endocarditis you give uh, endocarditis prophylaxis with uh, antibiotics so bacterial endocarditis prophylaxis and what that means is before th th these types of patients go into anything that might predispose them to bacterial endocarditis they're given antibiotics so for example a dental procedure um, things like that before a dental procedure they'd be giving an antibiotics most of the management of uh, Marfan syndrome is very uh, uh, preventative uh, rather than uh, treat uh, rather than curative um, as you can see, bracing for scoliosis and um, um, beta blockers for management of uh, cardiovascular complications. Well, to close out, I'd like to uh, talk uh, about a couple of vignettes, and here we go. A 44-year-old man with Marfan syndrome, aortic insufficiency, and mitral regurg comes to the emergency department because of severe substernal chest pain for the past three hours. He describes the pain as tearing in quality and radiating to the neck. One week earlier, he experienced sim similar but less severe chest pain and treated himself with aspirin, which of the following is most likely underlying cause for his worsening symptoms. Well, sometimes when a patient describes their pain, uh, that can help a lot with what words to use. And the word here he's using is tearing. And tearing, the word tearing oftentimes is associated with a dissection. It might help to remember that it looks like a tear. Uh, actually, the word tear is even there, um, and that's actually a, a nice buzzword to remember. And what's really happening with this patient is that he is having a dissection. He's undergoing a dissection. That is why um, this process of dissection is happening in him. That's why he's got some se such severe uh, chest pain, and um, as a result, he's come to the ER. So the answer for this is going to be C dissection of the aorta. The next one, a young man presents for an employment physical. He is very tall, has long fingers, and hyperflexible joints. He states that he has always been called double jointed. Which of the following disorders is associated with the symptom? Well, this is a relatively straightforward one. Um, a lot of it is just looking down this list and seeing if any of these uh, match the very, very limited uh, clinical vignette. And of course, since the presentation is about Marfan's, um, the answer is Marfan, but Marfan is not part of the choices. So you have to kind of think one step further, it's a classic second order question. Which of these is associated with Marfan's? Well, we just talked about this actually, dissecting aortic aneurysm, which is nicely pictured right here.